On this episode of The Wild Table, we head back to one of our favorite local spots on the lookout for some more game birds. And we finish the end of duck season with a bang and have ample opportunities to spook the majestic pheasant. Thankfully, we get a couple of pheasants on deck and head back to our outdoor kitchen to create a delicious pheasant pot pie over the fire. you've ever heard in your life. Thankfully I'm not too set on getting a deer this morning, but if I was I'd be very mad at those blinking ducks. I'll have to come back with a shotgun. <laughs> Since we're gonna go for a bird hunt, but we're also gonna keep an eye out for deer, hare, turkey, mushrooms. So let's see what today brings. Pheasants everywhere on this farm. It's, I just seen a couple there in the sun just behind us, so I think we're gonna replace the rifle with the shotgun and we'll go up there and have a look for some birds give Charlie some work to do it's the uh, 5th of June today here in New Zealand and uh, well, it's got to be the same date everywhere else too actually but um, I'm trying to say it is <laughs> it is the last day of um, duck season here in New Zealand so there's a little pond at the very bottom here and the last time I was here we shot a couple of ducks off the pond, so I think our first port of call. We're going to have a quick look for pheasants up here, but then we're going to take a wander down to the pond and see if we can shoot a couple of ducks. Uh, pheasant season thankfully rolls on for another couple of months, all the way through to August up here. Um, so then we have a little bit more time to hunt, but while we still have the chance, we might as well have a look for some more ducks. It's just uh, after seven o'clock in the morning here as well and uh, it's winter and it's cold and there's mist and rain and it's just perfect bird hunting weather. So. Yeah. Pheasants I tell you, they're like the road run to my wily coyote. Like they're so cunning, you know, you rock up to a piece of bush Boom, they go. You think you flushed them all, so you walk another step, and then boom, another three go. But where you were just worse, you can't shoot them either. Well, she wasn't trying to flush, so that's okay. I'll forgive her. Beautiful little um, grey mallard crosses here, 
nice and fat. They've obviously been feeding well on the farm. Um, I shot three ducks. It's, it's just bramble and thicker in there. It's really, it was really hard even finding the second one. So we're gonna try again a little bit later. But for now, we're gonna go down to the the shrubbers and see if we can pick up some pheasants. But it's a couple of beautiful birds anyway for the last day of duck season. I'm very happy with that. Got that pheasant. That'll be quick, man. Jay, but he's in there. Still flapping, man. Good job, Charlie. Where is he? Yeah, good girl. Thanks, Charlie. Good girl. Oh yeah, yeah. Look at that. Beauty. He's wet as a dog, but yep. That is a nice size pheasant too. Pheasant shooting, you know, it's it's so different to duck shooting. Like duck shooting, you can kind of be in the right place and wait for them, and you can also entice them in with the calls. Pheasant shooting, man, you just got to be quick, eh? Uh, also, like Charlie isn't isn't she's not a flushing dog, so she wasn't trained to really like get into the bushes and flush the pheasants towards me. She's not trained for that, so she doesn't doesn't really do that so good so honestly most of the time it's really just like walking and trying to be quick enough and pheasants are so smart they, they're just quite often they'll just wait till you've passed and then flush you know um, so yeah like hunting pheasants is actually like as far as bird hunting goes I think it's just so much more challenging and just so much more rewarding in a sense too when you get one um, and this is a really nice mature animal too it's a nice long tail feather Shot one here last week, but its tail feather was only about ended about here, so this one is it's quite a bit older. Nice long spurs. It's looking a little disheveled because of the wetness, but they're just a stunning bird. I love hunting them. So yeah, that was a good shot. Chessy was super quick on the camera and managed to capture it. Wrapped. Wrapped. Uh, so <coughs> about 10:30. Had a crack of some ducks, got a couple of ducks, got a nice cock pheasant. And this right here is liver pate from the last lot of ducks that we shot. So that, in my mind, a very, very fitting morning tea for breakfast. Yeah, good day out here on the farm. Lots of pheasants around. But man, you gotta beat your feet for these birds, eh? Can't sit still. So we're going to do a couple more rounds after this, check a few more spots and hopefully come away with another one, maybe two. Mm. That's good. <coughs> I have to say that because I made it, but it's good. birds mate. It's just out of range, eh? I knew that. We were just on the way out and we just decided to check a couple of these smaller pockets of bush because we'd seen the pheasants here before and sure enough kicked one up. And we sort of just snuck into the corner, so I jumped out of the truck and went after him, managed to get him on the second shot. And I think I clipped his wing. I think I just managed to get his wing, because his wing is broken. So, but he ran, so he dropped down the other side of the hill and just ran for ages. And I just went after him, and Charlie just hunted this bird down like a champion. She flushed it out of another bush, and then chased it down into another thicket. It was still well and truly alive, so she brought it back to me alive, which was just freaking awesome. Yeah, this was a good hunt. 
<sighs> very happy. Two beautiful birds on deck. That's all you really need, eh? And uh, see if we can get a good recipe for uh, some pheasant. Alright, welcome back to the outdoor kitchen this time around. Obviously that was a nice and successful pheasant hunt and I had to think about what to do with the pheasant meat and of course what could be a more iconic dish to make than a pheasant pie. Alright, so quite simply here's what we're going to do step by step. First we take the pheasant and we give it a nice little bit of browning on either side. Then we quite simply transfer the pheasant into a nice thick uh, cast iron pot. To the pot, we're going to add some pig strotters, a little bit more duck fat, some juniper berries, some black pepper and some bay leaves and top the whole thing up with a, a good amount of duck stock that we prepared earlier in the season. And then we're quite simply going to chuck that whole lot onto uh, some coals. We're going to simmer it for about two to three hours until all that meat becomes nice and gelatinous because of the pig strotters and all the pheasant meat wants to just fall right off the bone. Okay, so the pheasant, I'm just showing it now, has been cooking in the pot for the last um, couple of hours. And you can see the meat is nicely sort of starting to peel away from the frames. So, what we do is we take the pheasant out, we peel all the meat off of the pheasant and whatever we can salvage off of the pig trotters. And then we add that to a separate dish. Then, we're going to add the potato that we've just been chopping to the pot. And we're going to simmer the potatoes in the same broth. So the potatoes are done and they're delicious because they've been cooking in that nice rich uh, broth stock. So we're going to take the potatoes, we're going to strain them off, then we're going to add them to this casserole dish with the pheasant and the pork meat. Next, we're going to fry up the shallots, garlic and celery stalk. Then we're going to also add that to the casserole dish. Then we're going to sprinkle in some Italian herbs and a little bit of rosé wine and then simmer that all in the casserole dish for a little bit longer. Then. We're going to spoon the entire mixture into, the, into a pie dish and cover it with a delicious pie crust over the top. <laughs> so I, I'm not a pastry chef. I'm kind of new to pastry, as you might be able to tell. We're going for sort of rustic on this one. Uh, this is our second attempt. The first attempt went right back into the freezer. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Anyway, um, it's going to taste good. So what's going to happen for me is I'm going to take this pie Stick it back in the oven. The oven is running at about 180 Celsius, 350 Fahrenheit. I'm going to bake it in there for about 45 minutes. Um, actually, before I'm going to do that, I'm also going to add a little bit of egg wash. I should have said that first. Anyway, with the egg wash on, it's going in the oven, 180 degrees, 45 minutes, and it'll come out beautifully, I'm sure. All right, 45 minutes later, we have a very rustic looking pheasant pot pie. I'm pretty sure the recipe is to let it sit and cool for 10 minutes. I didn't do that because <coughs> I'm quite hungry after all that. But that is actually really freaking delicious. I do kind of wish that I had done a, a pie crust for the whole thing. But it's a, it's a beautiful flavor. That pheasant in there is really nicely pronounced. It's got the kind of the gelatinous texture of, of the pork trotters in there. And then the little uh, nicely browned pie crust on the top just gives it a good sort of finishing texture and flavor. But well, there you go. Never made a pie in my life. <laughs> 